wide. My dear Alex, I will always be at your side. Now, I'd like all of you to stop and think. Has Silicon Knights ever made a good game? Well, actually yes. 2002's Eternal Darkness, Sanity's Requiem, for the Nintendo GameCube. Now, 2002 wasn't an easy year to release a survival horror game. Resident Evil Remake was the king of the hill, and it was also on the GameCube exclusively. In no small part, Remake's success was a major roadblock for the success of Silicon Knight's Eternal Darkness. So you all know me, I love me some Remake, but Eternal Darkness did things just a little bit differently. Instead of following Resident Evil as a guide, Silicon Knights forged their own path, ditching tank controls, instead focusing on free movement and target-based combat, proving that it was indeed possible to scare us without hindering us as well. And that's a lesson that Capcom still hasn't learned to this day. To sweeten the pot, Silicon Knights added one more thing. Something that would forever change survival horror. Sanity effects. And to top all that off, we got a strong plot that spans centuries, culminating in an epic battle against Cthulhu-esque old gods. Silicon Knights takes us on a ride with a story that follows multiple characters who have in some way been touched by the evil of Pius Augustus, a Roman centurion who has become corrupted by one of three old god entities. Each character you play as uniquely struggles against Pius and his evil plan. And using aid from the mysterious Tome of Eternal Darkness, they battle the forces of evil with a unique magic system. Spanning 2,000 years and culminating with Alexandra Voivis' apocalyptic one-on-one -on -one showdown with Pius, Eternal Darkness shows us that horror game plots didn't have to be silly. They could genuinely make us terrified, all the while still being fun to play. And when it comes to gameplay, there are two places that Eternal Darkness really shines. The magic system and the sanity system. Magic is surprisingly complex and deep in Eternal Darkness. Throughout the game, you'll find a variety of different runes that can be combined with an elemental modifier to change the alignment of each spell, with monsters being weak or strong to certain elements. Players can experiment with different rune combinations for a truly unique and fun way to experience combat. Now, when it comes to combat, it's worth saying that fighting in Eternal Darkness is never once cumbersome or annoying. And believe it or not, that's kind of the standard when it comes to survival horror. But in Eternal Darkness, you can target enemies' individual body parts, and you'll always feel completely in control at all times. And I defy you to name another survival horror game that you can say that about. So finally, and perhaps most importantly, I want to just touch on the game's sanity system. Though somewhat shallow by today's standards, Sandy in Eternal Darkness was a new and interesting phenomenon. Seeing something profoundly fucked up will cause your character to lose a portion of sanity, causing unique spooky shit to happen all over the world. And if you let things slip a little too much, you'll actually start taking damage. Now, later in the game, you'll have enough tools at your disposal to make Sandy pretty much a non-issue. But remember, this is a system that we hadn't seen before in any real way. So overall, Eternal Darkness was a pretty amazing and unique horror game that dared to go against established norms. And let me tell you, it succeeded in what it set out to do. It was a critical smash hit, but unfortunately, kinda sold like shit. And whether or not it was because everybody bought Remake instead, or because it was a GameCube exclusive, truly I do not know, but it is unfortunate that we'll never see a sequel, no matter how bad old Dennis Dyack tries. All we can do is dream. So as always, I'm TG, if you like what you saw, you know what to do. Keep it sleazy, keep it spooky.